Good morning, good morning, good morning. Shout out to the people who have bought training. Shout out to the people who are about to buy training. And shout out to the Nerd Tribe. Glendon Cameron supports the people who support him. So thank you. In today's video, the U.S. of a corp U.S. Corporation of America. Lately, I've been putting up some religious theme videos and people have been going nuts. And one of the things I'm seeing is a lack of fundamental understanding of where you live. Like I've seen two, three, four, five, six paragraphs on um, in response to the videos that I have put up and some of these comments have a lot of emotion attached to them a lot of emotion and I saw this and I've seen this more than once you talk about money money will not save our people I've seen that over and over and over again and let me explain something to you if you're black you have a social security number and you live in one of the 50 states in the United States of America you reside inside of a corporation and many people don't seem to understand this because in the US of America corporation, it's, it's about money. Let's say you went ahead and you bought a house and let's say 150 acres of land. You bought it, you paid for it. In the US Corporation of America, if you do not pay your property taxes, they will take that land from you and sell it to someone else who will pay taxes. See, one of the things I figured out a long time ago in the US Corporation of America, it is about money. It is 100% about money to live in the US Corporation of America. I don't know what it's about to live somewhere else. I've never lived anywhere else. And one of the things I am seeing is, you know, our rich journey, Sheeta on the loose. These are people who have decided to depart from the US of America corporation because it's too expensive and their money will go further elsewhere. So for anyone who puts in the comments, it's not about the money. Not only are you fundamentally ignorant, you're fundamentally aware, unaware of where you live. And I keep seeing this comment the money, the money, you talk about money, money, you know, about our internal riches. And here's the thing. I have not had a near death experience, nor have you. So you really don't know what you're talking about. Until you die, you have no clue to what lies on the other side. But to be presently aware of what we you know what's over here you know what's on this side and what i'm beginning to see is a lot of people want to run away from the work last night i ordered the pizza and this is a common thing restaurants are struggling to get people to deliver pizzas to they're, they're struggling to get what i would classify as low wage workers it's a big struggle right now. And part of the struggle comes from the mindset of people not wanting to work. It's just that simple. And not wanting to work in the U.S. Corporation of America is going to catch up with you sooner or later. I am waiting 
for 2023 and 2024. Because right now we have a lot of people with the concept that I see it in the YouTube advertisements. Leave your nine to five. Let me say something that may sound very harsh. The average person doesn't have the discipline to run a business. The average person doesn't have the money management skills to run a business. So we have a bunch of people out there who have a desire to be liberated from the nine to five, but don't have the skill sets to liberate themselves. And at some point, at some point, there's going to come a day of reckoning. It reaches all of us. Like I personally know someone who is homeless because they made some very poor decisions in their past. And that day of reckoning has come for her. And that day of reckoning is going to come for all of you Bible and Jesus freaks. Because you cannot convince me, you cannot inform me, you cannot educate me that God plays a role in what goes on down here. You just can't. What goes on down here is the complete and 100 percent capacity of man. We have good men. We have evil men. And this is what's going on down here. And I see that many of you have been indoctrinated. You've been indoctrinated in religious dogma. Yet, let me ask you a question. <laughs> you are a good person. You don't do anything wrong to anyone. You don't mess with anyone. You don't mess anyone over. You lead a good and honest life. Yet, how many of you people who lead these good and honest lives, you don't lie, you don't cheat, you don't steal. How many of your lives are fucked up? See, there's something that's, you know, there, there's many people under this false assumption that if you're a good person, then good things are going to happen to you. Nothing could be further from the truth. I know people who are evil who are rich, happy, and successful. And I know people who are extremely good, kind-hearted people who are literally catching hell right now. So if God played a role, why is this happening? Why are good people suffering? Why are children getting cancer? Why, if God plays a role? It don't make no sense. But once again, this is where feelings trump facts. You have all of this evidence staring you directly in your face and you refuse to accept it and you go and dig into your dogma. It is crazy. You live in the U.S. Of America Corporation And if you're one of those Stupid And I'm, I'm, I'm not missing my words You are stupid If you think that money Has no role in what goes on down here you you stupid I guarantee you That if 25% Of the black population Owned businesses Statistically, we have the lowest rate of business ownership in the United States of America. If 25% of black people own businesses, that would literally transform the black experience. But here's the thing, because if 25% of black people own businesses like in the NFL, do you think it's unusual to see a black wide receiver? No, there have been numerous successful, highly talented black wide receivers. Do you think it's 
funny or weird to see a black running back? No, you're seeing a ton of black running backs. Is it unusual or strange to see an extremely successful black defensive lineman or a linebacker? No, we've been seeing that for decades. Now, this is something that's relatively new. You're seeing the emergence of the black quarterback. You're starting to see it because where are you where are you starting to see it? Like right now in the SSC, we have Bryce uh, Young, we have a uh, Hooker. There's literally LSU, Florida. I think there's. 13 teams in the SEC, which is arguably the most dynamic football league in America at the D1 level. And we're, I think, half of the SEC teams either have a starting black quarterback or have a backup black quarterback. And what you're going to see next year in the NFL draft, you're going to see Two black quarterbacks go in the first round. Two black quarterbacks go in the first round. And currently out of the 32 teams, there are six or eight starting black quarterbacks, which is unusual, which is strange. But wait 10 years in the future. In 10 years in the future, half, if not more, then the NFL will have black quarterbacks. And what's going to happen 10 years in the future, after the Pat Mahomes, after the Russell Wilsons, it's going to be normal, customary, and usual to see a successful black quarterback. It's just going to be the norm. And that's what would happen if 25% of the black population own the business. It would be normal to see a young, rich black person. It would be normal to see a young, successful black family in a big ass house. It would be normal. It would be, it wouldn't be strange. And that would change the perception of us and how we're viewed. So for all of you religious freaks, who keeps saying that money doesn't matter. You're fundamentally ignorant. You're stupid as fuck to live in the United States of America corporation and to have such a dangerous, let me say it, it's dangerous for you to live in the U.S. uh, corporation of America and to actually have the mindset that money doesn't matter. It is stupid. It is dumb. And it is hurting you, your family, and anyone that associates with your dumb ass on an intimate level. But once again, you've been indoctrinated in religious dogma. You've been indoctrinated in believing in your riches and rewards are going to come in your eternal life. While you struggle every day, the perception of black folks, and this is something that's really, really interesting. The black male has been able to elevate himself to a position where a successful black male can get a woman of any ethnic background that he wants because we're seen as being alpha. We're seen as being caring. So once again, if 25% of the black population own businesses, that would change everything. It would be a game changer because Black folks with money would be normal, routine. It would be not an event. You would be able to see a teenage, a male black teenager drive up in his daddy's Porsche and no one would blink an eye because they've seen that before. 
But once again, you have seen religion. You've seen religion for your grandma. You've seen religion for your granddad. You've seen, and we have seen over and over and over black preachers get rich off of a black flock. Reverend Ike in his Rolls Royce, Creflo Dollar. It goes on and on and on. Church is some of the best game there is. You've got black preachers flying around in private jets while the flock is going home to struggle to pay bills because they don't understand that they live in the U.S. Corporation of America. You've been indoctrinated. You have been bamboozled. You have been deceived. You've been led astray. See, during this, this reset, and a lot of people are being reset every day, almost 6,000 cars per day are being repossessed. People are getting their cars repossessed. They're getting their credit cards cut off. They're getting evicted because they are unaware of the rules of living in the U.S. Corporation of America. It's about the damn money. And anyone that tells you anything different is a fool. I don't know the Bible. I used to know it. I used to be one of those kids on Easter and I would say my piece of scripture in front of the church. And I left that because at an early age, I realized there was no profit in being a well-schooled religious scholar. There's no money in that. None. There's no money in knowledge of self. Okay, you know that you came from the Uribe tribe and on your daddy's side and you came from the Sahali tribe on your mama's side and you can go back generations and you know your people and you have your histories. How much damn money does that put in your pocket? Zero. But you know it. You study it and you're proud of it with your broke ass completely oblivious to the fact that you live in the U.S. Corporation of America, even though it is in your face. It's in your face. People with money get treated differently than people who don't have money. If that is not cold-blooded evidence that you live in the U.S. Corporation of America, I don't know what else would wake your stupid ass up. Right now, if you're one of those people who are walking around here talking about money doesn't matter, guess what? You're like Lizzo. You're like one of these fat chicks who is upset, who is all up in her feelings because her fat ass can't get the same kind of man that a slim, height, weight, proportional woman can get. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You should want me, even though I am fat as fuck. You should want me. This whole shame. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to keep it the buck. Uh, the girlfriend that was before this one, the reason I got rid of her ass, she was chunking the fuck up. I was like, she took some pictures of me, some pictures for me and some lingerie. And all I could see was her ass was getting wider. I deleted those pictures because she was getting fucking fat. No successful man with opportunity and reach wants a fat bitch. No man does, but there's a movement. There's a movement 
of these fat bitches who are protesting, who are up in arms. Like, you should want me. Yeah, so I'm 5'2 and 285. You should want me. You should want me that I got a belly that makes me look pregnant when I'm not pregnant. You should want me. Because I want to be wanted. Fuck me doing the work, losing the weight, getting in shape, and preparing myself to get a high value man, aka Kevin Samuels. No, 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 no. I want the same benefits as that skinny bitch. That's how you sound when you say money doesn't matter in the U.S. Corporation of America. That's how you sound. You sound like a damn fool. Because as a man, and you, many of you men are in the manosphere, black pill, purple pill, red pill, whatever pill you are, and you consciously, you don't even want to date a woman over 30, let alone a fat bitch. Yet you will pull out your Bible, say your scriptures, say your prayers, and completely ignore the fact that you live in the U.S. Corporation of America where money matters. Money matters. I mean, it matters. And one of the things, like going forward, uh, the first video of the day is going to be a topic. I'm talking about religion because look, this this is what I'm seeing because this is something that's funny and I mentioned this in the last video. I have a B school for hustlers in the corporate game channels that deal with business, how to start a business, how to run a business, how to scale a business. But my channel with the fuckery, with the entertainment factor, has the most views. So you can't convince, see, that, that's one thing. It, to be unaware, to not know, it's not a sin. It's not a sin to be ignorant, to be unaware. Because we, you know, we don't know what we don't know. That's not the sin. The sin is to refute direct evidence that the way that you're living is wrong. That's the sin. And I keep getting these comments. Money will not save our people. I would disagree. I would disagree. And I will put this out again. If 25% of America were business owners, the perception of us would change so much. So many things would change in the community. Number one, the number of single mothers would drop dramatically. You want to know why? Because if 25% of black America were business owners, that means that one out of four black men have money. And here's the thing. And I kind of understand why in the red pill, the black pill, the blue pill, whatever pill you are, they don't want to get married. I would not want to get married when I was struggling myself. You struggling, you can't make it on your own. Why would you want to bring someone else into that mess? So I understand. But if you had money, you had access, it'd be a different, it'd be a different game. But once again, the game of America is about money. And if you live in the United States of America, it's about money. If you live in Europe, guess what? It's about money. And if you live in Israel, guess what? It's about money. If you live in Africa, it is becoming about money. If you live in China, it's about money. So what's going to happen in the next 50 years? Everywhere in the world is going to be on the theme of the U.S. Corporation of America. You're not going to be able to reside anywhere civilized without money. It's just not going to happen. And the sooner that you can wrap your brain around that concept, because once again, 
if you find comfort in studying religion, that's cool. But let me put this bug in your ear. Study the religion in your in your off time. You know, when you're just sitting around, you're chilling on the weekends, you know, you don't have nothing to do. That's when you should study religion. During primetime hours, you should be about getting that money. That's what you should be doing. Because once again, you live in the U.S. Corporation of America. And it is what it is. As they like to say, in the, it is what it is. And if you don't understand that concept, you're going to be reset. Right now, I estimate there's 6,000 car repossessions per day in America. So we can safely say that 10,000 people per day are being reset, which is 300,000 people per month, which is three to four million people per year who are being reset. I was watching a piece where people were living in extended stay hotels because they got evicted and they could not rent another place. That's part of the global reset. That's part of the reshaping of the U.S. Corporation of America. What I predict in the future is the rich people are not going to live anywhere close to the poor people. There's going to be a wall. There's going to be an orbiting saddle. There's going to be something where rich people are going to separate themselves from the poor, unwashed masses. We will have walled cities. I guarantee you it is coming. I won't be here to see it because this is all going to happen after I am dead, but it is coming. This is the way we're going because you live in the U.S. Corporation of America and, you know, thankfully for me that I understood that concept because I feel in 2019 when I had my heart attack if I had been somewhere else other than where I lived, living around the corner from one of the best hospitals, not in the best hospitals of Georgia, but one of the best hospitals in the country. And I got top notch cardiologists. I got top notch training. Here's some I didn't share with you. I almost had to go on dialysis when I had my heart attack and stroke because my kidneys were about to shut down. My kidney function was 10%. Right now, my kidney function is 65%. My urologist is shocked and amazed because he has not seen this kind of healing. Because here's the thing, because I'm on blood pressure medication and my blood pressure has been down for three years. My kidneys, which was damaged by my high blood pressure, have healed and this all came because I had money. I was in the best hospital. I was in the best treatment. I received the best care. And I'm black. I need to throw that off in there for all of those like, well, if you're black, you're just you're just messed up because they're not. I received the best of the best of the best. My kidney function is like 65 percent now. I have noticed the changes. Like I wake up in the morning, I'm back to peeing for almost a full minute. That wasn't happening when my kidney function was subpar. And my kidney function isn't even 100%, but my kidney function is better than where it was, significantly better. And each month, my kidneys get a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. And I tell you this because all you people, money doesn't matter. Money ain't going to solve the problems. You misinformed. You're uneducated. You've been indoctrinated in a religious dogma that's not going to serve you in the U.S. Corporation of America. 
you're spending a great amount of time like once again if you want to study religion you want to go to church knock yourself out but doing prime time hours you need to be about getting that money let's dispense with this well you know you're coming at it from a money perspective you sound like lizzo you sound like those fat chicks yeah i'm fat but you still should want to fuck me let me tell you something I'll tell you something. Even you know why you often see fat chicks with skinny dudes. Number two, skinny dudes usually have big dicks, and they can fit in all of those folds. They can they can hit it right. They can penetrate deep. But if you're a dude with an average sized dick trying to fuck a fat chick and she ain't flexible, it just ain't as satisfying. I don't think it would be just as satisfying. Uh, you, you can't get in there. You can't, you can't, you can't just hit those angles. But once again, if you're one of these people who reside in the U.S. Corporation of America and you don't think that money matters, you sound like one of these fat chicks or even worse, transgenders. These men who have transitioned to a female presentation are shocked and dismayed when straight heterosexual men don't want nothing to do with them. They're like, you should want me. I'm a woman. I'll tell you something. I was in the elevator. This six foot three transsexual with huge titties big as my head are acrylic on her fingernails and toes and I'm just looking at this and I go down and I look up and I got a big ass dick and I'm just sitting here what would possess because see to be 6'3 as a man that's the lottery in America to be a 6 with a big dick to be 6 what would want you to make you give up all of the perks and benefits of being a 6 foot 3 man to become a woman I didn't understand it. I don't understand it. I am not aware of the urges, the feelings, the consciousness of a transgender. I have no clue. But once again, I do know, and you can Google it, you can fact check me. The transgender women are surprised that heterosexual straight men do not want to be do anything with them. They don't want to date them, they don't want to cuddle with them. They don't want nothing to do with them. And then for the dudes who will get with a transgendered woman who's had the operation, a lot of people think they gay because, yes, it's true that the penis is gone, but they used to have one. Now they have a manufactured vagina that they have to put things in to keep it functional because if they don't put things in it it's going to shrink up because it wasn't originally designed to be a vagina so yeah but once again if you live in the United States of America or any westernized country money matters this presentation was brought to you by the corporate game let's get into that be that wonderful bean footage What's going on? My name is Glendon Cameron, and I want to introduce you to the corporate game. What is the corporate game? The corporate game is a collegiate level educational portal that will teach you how to have your best version of your life. I got a question. What would you do if you had the money that you needed to have the life that you wanted to have. And for the average American, an additional $3,000 per month makes a huge, huge difference. So this is the collegiate level corporate game, teaching you things about business, money, corporate structures, business credit, all of that, plus a lot more. Now here is the deal. You can start a business. You can do it with the right level of training, 
in the right level of execution. And here's the thing that you have to understand. Starting this business is going to take time. I know that we are in a situation where every day you're hit over the head with information saying that you can take this course, you can hack this, and you can literally quit your job in 30 days. This isn't that. You can do it, but it's going to take time. And one of the things is, and this is something that I never hear anyone talking about, is that you have to change who you are to go ahead and to set up a situation where you can become a corporate citizen. Now, what's a corporate citizen? A corporate citizen is a person through a job or a combination of businesses that makes $250,000 per year at this level you can get rich you can become a millionaire within 10 years following this blueprint and that's what we give you in the corporate game what it is and how to play so if you want to sign up if you want to be a millionaire within the next 10 years go ahead sign up for the corporate game the link is in the first comment